Hi everybody, happy Tuesday after Thanksgiving. Um, I wanted to pop in here at a different time of the day. My lighting kind of sucks. <laughs> um, but I wanted to do a live stream um, instead of just doing a post um, because I thought it would be more beneficial. There, my lighting looks good. Um, so weight loss tip, weight WLS tip Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to say it's not just what you're eating. And there's a couple different perspectives. Like I know some people say, um, well, it's the emotional piece because it's not just what you're eating, but what's going on inside of you that makes you want to eat. Um, and I think that there are two components that I wanted to talk about today that are um, tip worthy. So the first one is stress. So whenever there is stress, there can be an urge to soothe or to want to eat uh, because that may be a coping mechanism that a lot of people have had for a very long time. Um, and I know I've been very open about when I get anxious, um, that has been um, something that comes up for me where I have to be practicing that awareness and I definitely encourage um, my clients and everybody here to practice that awareness too of, okay, am I really hungry? Is it time to eat? Or am I just um, stressed or anxious or frustrated or experiencing another emotion? And so it's important to reflect on the stress and stress eating because it's not just what you're eating but why you're eating. Um, so that I kind of wanted to share in terms of practicing awareness and getting people to really look at, hmm, why am I eating? Especially this time of year because um, the holidays can bring upon stress in terms of uh, the family, friends, judgment, uh, that people may have and there's there's tons of stuff but the immediate stuff that comes to mind is um, judgment about the surgery itself and people passing judgment people who may not have seen you for a while um, and that kind of thing I've had some some of that come up for some of my clients since Thanksgiving and some things that we worked on before Thanksgiving um, <clears throat> but even more so this time of year is most offices right are now starting to experience the influx of crap and what I mean by that is the cookies and the cakes and the candy and the and all that kind of stuff. So um, I see a lot of uh, my clients who are really battling with everybody eating, 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 eating. And this is the time of year when people typically, typically, generally, um, can gain weight because they're not staying on plan. Uh, and that's something to be aware of. So. Is it eating just to eat, eating because it's comfortable, eating because um, everybody around you is eating, or maybe it's because of stress? So there were two things that I wanted to talk about. First of all, stress, which I've kind of already talked about, but then the other one is also sleep. So stress can lead to um, a lack of sleep or not getting enough rest, and that is an issue as well. So it's not just what you're eating, but why you're eating, right? And, and then the stress component, because the stress component also can lead to other internal biological factors. And if you're not working on the stress, then that's another issue that your body um, can struggle with in terms of soothing. So it's not just, oh, I, I'm eating or I'm eating because I'm stressed, but it's also uh, where you may be struggling um, emotionally but then that floods your body with all of the the hormones and stuff like the cortisol and the stress hormones and things like that where then your body is unable to you're you're experiencing like not just inflammation but you're experiencing this emotional response and your adrenals and so your system is flooded um, with hormones and then what happens you have a struggle losing weight. And so this is when I see people go, oh my gosh, I'm eating on plan. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to. Why is it that I'm not losing weight? Well, then I'll typically ask two questions. Are you sleeping? <clears throat> How stressed are you? And that is usually when I'll have people go, oh, yeah, I've been really stressed lately. So your body will hold on to weight or fat 
uh, and not release it if you're super stressed. So that is something that I want you guys to look out for. And that is why some of the work that I do and some of the stuff that I post is relaxation based. Um, because I think it's important for people to realize that stress can actually impact your body and hold on to weight even when you're on plan. So part of it is food, which I've already talked about. Part of it is stress. And the other part of it is making sure that you get enough sleep. And the research shows, the clinical research that I've read um, from, from surgeons and bariatricians and things like that, or that if you're not getting adequate sleep, if your body is unable to rest, right, that's another contributing factor to obesity. So, but what does that have to do with psychology? Well, then the reason I talk about it is because there are some people that absolutely can't sleep. It's a biological issue. Okay, go see a doctor, go see your PCP or do a sleep study or what have you. There are other people that can't sleep because they're stressed, because they have anxiety. And so those are the people that I am really um, speaking to now. So if you know someone who's like that, like this video may help them. So. If you're experiencing anxiety and it's keeping you up at night, then that's where some of the relaxation techniques, some of the um, anti-anxiety techniques, some of these um, energy techniques that I like have put in the book and in other places can really help you in terms of calming your mind and also your body down, right? Because it's, and I'm going to go back to what I said earlier, it's not just what you're eating, when you're eating, or why you're eating, but it's also the ability to self-soothe, calm yourself down without food and using alternate activities like, okay, I need to call a friend or um, I need to go for a walk or I have to do some relaxation techniques or some mindful, um, you know, mindfulness exercises and things like that to kind of calm down your brain and then your body so that you're not, you know, constantly in that state of stress and, you know, kind of, um, for, for lack of a better term, like freaking yourself out and kind of in that cycle of, ah, <clears throat> so thank you guys for just joining. You guys may need to go back to the beginning because I've just talked about a couple different things. Hey, Marilyn, I just, I just saw you jump on. So um, this is you, so the, the state of stress <laughs> that I'm talking about where you're like, ah! So that's a contributing factor to obesity that a lot of people don't recognize that they're just like, okay, well, I'm doing everything right. Um, I'm eating, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So what we want to work on if you're in a constant state of stress is first of all, look at what's stressing you, right? Because most stress is actually an underlying fear of something. So you know, get out your notebooks. What is it that I'm fearing? So what I'll walk through clients is what is the likelihood that this will happen? So a lot of times anxiety are, are false, false fears. Um, so of course you've heard the saying fear, false evidence appearing real. Um, so we have these fears in our head that something's going to happen. And so we kind of play out this movie, but really what's the likelihood that it's going to happen? Generally, you stay stressed now struggling from regain. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so, and, and I'm going to ask a question here, but are you, are you stressed because of the regain or is it, did you regain as a result of stress and see how this, this cycle can happen? It's like, it's the chicken or the egg, or, you know, it's like one of those situations where maybe you're struggling from regain and then that's causing you stress. And so what happens is then you struggle with getting the weight back off because you're so stressed. So, um, I think the, the, the main issue here is to look at where the stress is coming from because there are people and I know this is true that have stress and I've seen it posted in other groups like oh I have you know financial issues I have job issues I have to feed my kids I have to you know keep a roof over my head like and I know all fears whether they're um, you know fears that are that are based in um, like I'll give you a fear for example like um, I have um, a client whose fear is like, well, I'm, I might not be able to ever support myself. Well, that that's a fear, but the truth is 
she's she's always had a job she's always held a job and even when she's let's say been let go or in transition she's always found something quickly so the fear is coming from while it's coming from a logical place fear is a lot of times illogical right because um, it's it's not it's again false evidence appearing real so we have to look at the facts of a situation Right? So there's an exercise that I'd like you guys to do in terms of looking at the facts of a situation. So what are the facts? So let's say for my client who's looking at the, the whole job thing. Have you ever been without a job? Well, yes. Not, not me, but I'm talking about this, this client. And I said, okay, but how, how long was it? Well, not very long, a couple weeks. So you've always found something. Yes. Okay, so is it likely that you'll find something again? Yes. So again, when we look at things from a fact-based perspective, then we're able to kind of remove the emotions and move forward. So there's, and, and this is a complex, <clears throat> and I'm giving an example, and it's a complex situation, but when, when we're looking at the facts of a situation, we're able to pick it apart and look at what's real versus what's not real. And the truth is, when it comes to emotions, our emotions feel very real, but at the same time, they're not real because we tell ourselves stories in our head that kind of take us down a rabbit hole, which then make us go. <gasps> so we're breathing shallow, the stress hormones are released, and then we end up again holding on to weight and then there's this ripple effect. So I'm, I'm bringing us all back. So what I'm saying is when you look at the fear, what is the fear that you have? whether it's life-based, weight-based, family-based, relationship-based, money-based, what is the fear, right? Write it down. What's the absolute worst thing that could happen? Write it down. What is the likelihood that that would actually happen? Write it down. Because nine times out of 10, that situation is absolutely not likely to happen. But the fear is what keeps us engaged inside of our heads. And when we're focused on a problem, we're not focused on a solution. So what I'm trying to encourage people to do is to be solution focused instead of problem focused. Okay. And I have to look at the time because I know I have a, a session coming up soon. But um, so I definitely want to encourage everybody um, to think about being solution focused, but also engaging the fear deeper than just, I have this fear and I'm going to go into an emotional spiral about it and then freak out because I think that's where people end up going is then, they, then they freak out emotionally. And then as a result of that emotional place, then what happens, people want to eat to soothe or which is just one piece. And then there's the, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. And then the hormones are released. And then that's where um, okay, but I'm doing everything I'm supposed to and I'm not losing weight. So this is, this is a multi-layered, multi-dimensional issue. But what I want to say is I know it's real. Um, the feelings feel very real. And even when I experience stress and anxiety, um, it feels very real. Like, and, and I'm saying this because we all feel it as though it's happening. It's real. Like the world is crumbling down around me. <laughs> and the truth is, um, when we look at it, it's, it's just the fear. It's just the anxiety. It's just the frustration. And if we're able to kind of work through it with, um, the therapeutic techniques that, that I'm, that I'm sharing, like this is just one of them. And, um, I've also got some different ones that are in, in the book as well in bariatric mindset success. Like I do EFT, which is emotional freedom techniques. Um, I have some different mindfulness exercises and of course I have mindful eating exercises in there too. But a lot of times, um, again, the eating is just one part. The other part is getting us to manage our emotions, not only around food, but just in general, managing our emotions in general so that we can deal with stress better. Because again, with stress comes sometimes that excess weight. So that's what's important to also remember and then making sure that you're sleeping effectively. So, um, but right now that's an exercise that I encourage you guys to, to work on or what, are, what is it that I'm really fearing and then kind of writing out the facts of your situation, which you then will usually see. And a lot of times, um, 
like I have, um, another client who's in grad school and she's like, well, I always, I always fail fall semester. And I'm like, well, let's look at that. You don't always, so always and never are some blanket statements. Mm, no, no, I don't think so. Like you may have struggled, but you don't always fail. And so we have these different perceptions in our head um, of certain things that sometimes can keep us stuck. So that's why um, writing these things out or looking at them more logically can help us see like, oh, that isn't true. But that's the story that I've been telling myself. So that's the story that you tell yourself and, and so it's perspective, typically based on emotions, but when you actually write it down and play it out, the truth is different than the emotion. The truth is different than the feeling. The truth, the facts are different than, um, let's say, the perspective. So that is my, um, my tip for today, is to really examine your stress, how much you're sleeping, um, and where you are with that so that we can move you beyond that. Because it's, again, not just what you're eating, but also these other factors as well that may cause different, um, I don't want to say stalls, because stalls happen, y'all. Stalls happen. Um, and I, I want you to recognize that, that stalls do happen and that you can overcome stalls and break through stalls. And sometimes that's just your body adjusting. So I want to differentiate stalls from stress and um, where you may get stuck as a result of stress. So if you're going through a stressful situation, then I would definitely um, encourage you to use some relaxation techniques and to really examine like, okay, what what's really going on here in terms of the stress and then, um, you know, are you sleeping effectively and that kind of thing. So <clears throat> I hope that you guys have an amazing um, Tuesday. If you have questions, um, about this video or about stress or about anything else, um, go ahead and comment on this post and I will pop in and out throughout the day and um, answer those questions. Okay, so, oh, my light is, is off again. But um, I hope that you guys have an amazing Tuesday and that is my weight loss tip for the day. And um, love and light. Talk to you soon. Bye.